Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Colin Tennant. I'm Head of Technical Education and Training within the Conservation Directorate uh, at Historic Environment Scotland. Uh, one of the reasons I just brought up these slides, I know that everybody in this room probably knows what we do, but I think what I'd just like to highlight before going on to talk about the, the, the work that we do with traditional skills and technical conservation skills is that it's actually our multiple role as an employer, uh, a trainer, and as the lead public body that gets us a lot of traction and enables us to influence uh, what our specific part of the sector is looking to do. Uh, so just it's just to bear that in mind as we go through, uh, as I go through this presentation. Uh, why are we interested in traditional skills? That's a pretty good reason to make sure that people know what they're doing. Uh, there's a huge issue in Scotland with uh, generations of people not being trained in how to maintain our traditional buildings uh, or how to uh, specify how those traditional buildings should be maintained. And this can be the consequence of that lack of training and lack of professional knowledge. So uh, it's a quite an important uh, area for us to, to be involved in and to uh, influence uh, what's happening. Uh, our area of interest, I think, you know, we're obviously we are perhaps known for being more interested with the, the, the top of the iceberg there and not necessarily the, the, the bit that is uh, beneath, but really what we've learned over the past uh, 10 to 15 years is the need to get involved in those traditionally constructed buildings that create the backdrop to our lives here in Scotland and the importance of us getting involved in mainstream uh, training, mainstream construction industry training, whether that's at a craft level or, or at a technical and professional uh, level. And really what our, our mantra has become is this triangle of knowledge, skills and materials and the need for that to, to be the basis of the information that we're giving uh, to those that we train and the, the, the training that we try and influence, uh, that we understand uh, what we're doing, we do research, we increase our knowledge, we impart that through skills training and we also realise that we need to have better access to traditional materials uh, and those sorts of issues as well to make sure that we're able to, to conserve the historic environment uh, going forward. Probably about uh, 10 years ago now, we were fortunate that we were able to publish on behalf of the Scottish Government a traditional building skill strategy uh, that really gave us uh, a lot of impetus uh, in our uh, work in this area and gave us the authority to go out and start to build partnerships with bodies like Skills Development Scotland, uh, Construction Industry Training Board, to start to put in place some of the initiatives that uh, I'll highlight to you today. And one of the key diagrams in that strategy was uh, the skills triangle. And I think a recognition from us that uh, skills are a fluctuating situation, a dynamic uh, situation it doesn't stay still for very long. And as the economy changes, and as uh, uh, different types of projects that are coming online uh, change, we see skills moving up and down this, this triangle, moving from the more mainstream end towards the specialist end. And therefore, we have to sort of focus our attention on where we can need to make strategic interventions to support some of the, the particularly the more uh, highly specialist skills at the more artisan and specialist end uh, of the triangle, uh, you know, in quite a direct way, in quite a labour intensive and, and, and cost of intensive way to make sure those skills survive uh, for us going forward. But also we can't afford to forget the, the mainstream aspect and the fact that 90% of the work carried out on traditional buildings in Scotland is carried out by mainstream people not specialist. So we've got to be operating across the breadth uh, of this entire uh, triangle in different ways and in different forms. Uh, I went to a presentation a couple of years ago now uh, that was run by Royal Institute of Chartered Surveyors and this really stuck in my mind. They ran a whole campaign on the fact that we're in a war for talent 
and they didn't just mean charter surveyors, they, me they meant uh, built environment and the environmental professions uh, in general. And the fact that we were, they were going out trying to sell surveying as a career. And when you ask most people, what do you think a surveyor is? They thought it was somebody that did street surveys. People didn't know that there was things as quality surveyors, building surveyors. Uh, so I think sometimes as uh, professionals working within a sector, because it's our lives, it's our passion, uh, it's our interest, as well as our uh, career and profession, we overappreciate perhaps our value and we overappreciate the awareness that the rest of society has of what we do and the, the, the way that we do it. And I think that's an, an important thing to, to bear in mind. So over the past couple of years, I've been using this phrase that we are in a war for talent and trying to articulate to people what does that mean for us and what do we have to do. And I think the key thing for me is that we have to start to look at how we recruit people. We need to realise that we are in competition with other sectors uh, for young people looking for a career. We have to embrace technology. Uh, we can't just sit, uh, rest on our laurels and uh, expect people to come to us. Uh, it's about mainstreaming, and I'll come back to that, but I think you know, all too often as a sector, we've sat in our wee corner and thought that other people should provide solutions for us, but actually we've got to provide our own solutions. Uh, we've got to grow our own. What we want is nobody else's priority but our own, and I think today's event is a, is a great step forward and seeing, seeing that start to come through. And I think we need this parity of esteem between vocational and academic training. Uh, certainly, when I left school, uh, the push was to go to university. Uh, we need to, re you know, and now people my generation are the people who are informing young people's choices now. And we are just reiterating a lot of that uh, messaging that everything has to be about further higher education rather than looking at different pathways uh, into work. I actually think there's a window of opportunity and I think you've seen that from some of the, the, the talks already today from, uh, from colleagues. Uh, you know, the, whole, the whole SG policy around developing the young workforce, uh, the increasing costs of higher education versus the opportunity to earn whilst you learn, whilst you're doing an apprenticeship. Uh, the push for more equality and diversity in our workforces is pushing us to look at other areas of society where there's good people with good uh, potential, but how do we help them get into our sector uh, and create? how do we create pathways for uh, harder to reach uh, groups. And I'm afraid it's a social and economic reality. We've got an aging workforce, an aging population, increased pressure on public <coughs> finances. We need to get a productive working population. And I think a lot of the steps that, that have been talked about today will help us address uh, these issues. SCQF framework. I actually think this is a, an amazing asset that we have as a country. Uh, you can map vocational academic qualifications onto a framework and show the relative value, the progression routes, uh, the, uh, the range of opportunities that are out there for people in terms of training and education, whether that's uh, vocational or academic. And I think Go on the SQA website and get your head around this. Get your head around the values and the acronyms. Training education is an acronym hell. Uh, but if we're to convince people that what we are doing is important and is of value, we need to be able to talk the talk. We need to be able to talk about what we want within the parameters that the mainstream training education sector uh, set down for us. So knowing that what a SVQ is, knowing what a PDA is, 
is crucial if you're talent and you're going to get uh, young people coming in uh, to, to industry. Almost before I go on to talk about some of the education and training aspects that, that, that we're working on with regards to uh, conservation skills, is the importance of just general education outreach and skills tasters. And I know the archaeology sector is really good at this in terms of community engagement. Uh, but getting out there, demonstrating the worth of what you're doing, the opportunities that there are, the added value that your careers can bring uh, to, to people's lives is really important. And that's one of the key focuses of the work that we're doing at the Engine Shed in Stirling, our building conservation centre, is trying to get those messages across. Uh, and Brian uh, is here today from my team from the Engine Shed, so feel free to speak to Brian if you want to learn anything uh, more about the Engine Shed. Uh, over the past few years, our, our focus has been on uh, craft apprenticeships. As an employer, we employ stonemasons, electricians, joiners, plumbers, gardeners, uh, and that's the area that we focused upon. So delivering modern apprenticeship, SVQ level three, and advanced craft in some of those craft areas. And we've also developed some upskilling uh, qualifications, a professional development award, and repair and maintenance of, of traditional buildings. Uh, we also run a number of programmes. Uh, so we've, for at least, I think, 15, 10, 15 years, we've run a craft fellowship programme. Currently got seven uh, craft fellows across the country, again, at that specialist end of the, the, the skills triangle, uh, where we're enhancing the basic skills that these crafts people have and equipping them for those highly specialist uh, craft skills where we have a demand for, for, for those going forward. Uh, we've enhanced our internship programme this financial year, so we've currently got 11 interns across Conservation Directorate, across a range of uh, professional disciplines, and we've got involvement with uh, 12 PhDs uh, in, with our partners in, in, in higher education. This year is the first year of our uh, Advanced Technical Diploma, in uh, building conservation uh, and again that's uh, something that we've gone and done ourselves because we couldn't get the the higher education sector to really address some of the concerns we had about technical and vocational content of qualifications uh, and I think uh, we're really pleased with how that's going and see that as an area that we can develop and, and not uh, exclude uh, the traditional higher education sector, but actually ho hopefully o offer it as a as a, a an added value, an upskilling opportunity uh, for people within the sector. And then back at the craft level, we've realised that we don't need maybe to train quite as many stonemasons as we've had in the past, and we've developed uh, an estate maintenance qualification with Rural Skill Scotland, which includes some basic building conservation with things such as path maintenance, fence maintenance, uh, some of the, the, the activities that are more uh, suited to our more rural uh, sites. We do realize there's still a lot of work to do. So we have uh, committed to developing uh, SVQ in heritage skills that covers 13 craft areas from earth building to thatching, architectural, uh, blacksmithing, uh, a whole range of, of craft areas and working with SQA to develop uh, PDAs to, to underpin the, the knowledge and understanding aspects of those uh, uh, VQs that we're looking to develop and deliver. And we're also quite interested in looking at how we can influence the this almost the supply chain for those people going into uh, craft apprenticeships. We find through our education outreach work that when you're talking about traditional skills, uh, historic environment, it does chime with young people. It's something they can understand. It's something that they see in their everyday lives. Uh, it's something that intrigues them that they can become a stonemason and put a creative skill with a practical skill and, and, and develop themselves in that way. So looking at things like skills for work at a school level 
and getting in there and, and trying to develop a heritage aspect to that uh, is an area of work that we're, look, we're looking to progress with. And again, just trying to influence those other uh, groups of people that may not think of our sector as an area of opportunity for them. Uh, Canal College has already been mentioned this morning. You know, I think that's a really excellent uh, initiative and again, can open doors for, for young people to, to see what opportunities are out there for them. Uh, and we're supporting a number of other similar initiatives uh, across the country. And all that stuff in Regisi up there is all stuff that we would like to do and we would uh, want to do going forward. Uh, I think the, the professional and technical apprenticeships is something that we would like to get into and maybe transform our internship programmes into those type of apprenticeship programmes. Um, one thing that was suggested to me this week was why aren't we speaking to Education Scotland about a national five or a higher qualification in built environment or heritage or historic environment and maybe that is something that we should consider as a sector and maybe that's something that could come out of the uh, the sector investment plan. So for us what does success look like? It looks like you know there's a change in awareness uh, and a, a, a knowledge and understanding of what we need to do. Uh, we're back in the mainstream and we're not seen as being specialist. It's something that's open to all. Uh, it's commonplace, it's readily available. Actually, we're pretty good at this stuff as a country and we should get out there and tell people about it. And I think there's a, there is potential there for economic growth and development off the back of what we know and our expertise that we have in this country. <laughs> and uh, if we do all that, I think we'll have uh, won our war for talent. Uh, just going to quickly flick through these slides because Robin's flagging up things to me that I've running out of time but I think it's about a range of offers and things like outreach having some place where you can take people and actually show them what you're doing different offers for different audiences uh, so they can experience the work that the sector does and therefore they are better informed going f you know, forward in terms of when they are influencing other people's decisions uh, young people these are apprentices that we took on a number of years ago. It has to be about these people getting a real job. Uh, my colleague Ian Walker, who's a very grumpy ex-bricklayer, uh, says these people have to get paid on a Friday. And they do. That's a fact of life for everyone. So this has to be about real jobs, real people, real outcomes uh, for young people. Uh, and there's one of those apprentices rather more fresh face there than he is there uh, meeting the cab sec uh, four years later uh, when he's completed his apprenticeship and secured permanent employment uh, with ourselves. Uh, influencing politicians, whether we like it or not, it's something we have to do. We had Mr Swinney into the engine shed. We didn't talk to him about heritage. We talked to him about science, technology, engineering, and mathematics because <coughs> that's what you wanted to hear so we need to change our messaging to make sure that we're influencing the right people uh, and getting our messages across it's about saying that what we do is fun could be fulfilling uh, and and can change uh, your lives uh, this was highlighted to me yesterday uh, federation of master builders highlighting what the professionals get paid compared to the tradespeople. Some of us might be thinking of going back and getting retrained. <laughs> uh, and it's again about getting out, demonstrating what we're doing uh, and showing people it can be fun and showing that yes, we're geeks, we're proud of our technical knowledge and our expertise and our professionalism and it's something that we want to share uh, with as many people as we can to enthuse them to come into our sector. Thank you.